so today we're going to talk about the French accent. And just remember that an accent differs from a dialect in the sense that with an accent, your character is French or German or Italian, and English is their second language. So just like for you, when you learn a new language, uh, and you take the sounds that, you've used, that you're used to doing your whole life, there's a tendency to apply those same sounds to the new language. Your character would be doing the same thing. So they would be French, and if English was their second language, they would be taking their French language sounds and applying them to their new language, English. And the best way to really learn an accent is to first learn the basics of the language so that you have a foundation as to why you're making the sound changes, etc., etc. So that is what we are going to do today. So the French emphasize their words a little bit differently than we do. If we were to say these two words, photo and photograph, we would tend to put the emphasis on the first syllable. Photo, photograph. With the French, they tend to put the emphasis on whatever the last syllable of the word is. So they would pronounce this same word, which is a word in French as well. Instead of photo, they would say photo. So they would emphasize the last syllable. Instead of photograph, they would say photograph. So the emphasis would be on the last syllable. Photo, photograph. Also with the French, they tend to emphasize the last syllable of a phrase. So if they were just going to say the word petit, which means little, and they were just going to say this word alone, they would emphasize the last syllable of that word. Petit, petit. But if they were going to say un petit ville, a little town or a little village, they would tend to emphasize the last word or sound of the phrase. So contrast petite with en petite ville, en petite ville. Another example of this would be if you were, they were just to say the word monsieur alone. They would emphasize the last syllable, monsieur. But if they were to say monsieur de pont, they would emphasize that. So contrast Monsieur with Monsieur de Pont. Monsieur, Monsieur de Pont. Anytime you're learning a language, there's always going to be some sounds that they do in that language that they don't do in your own language. So you have to learn new phonetic symbols and new sounds regardless of whatever accent you're learning. So in this case, of course, we're going to learn some French consonant sounds, and these are French consonant sounds that uh, we do not do in English. This is a new phonetic symbol, and it's the sound of <sighs> We don't tend to do that in English. It's kind of like if you put the back of your tongue up to, to make a k sound, but you just trill the back of your tongue, and it's a voiceless sound. It's the correct pronunciation for the name Bach, Bach, Bach. So the tip of the tongue is behind your bottom teeth, the back of the tongue is up to the soft palate, and you just trill that soft palate. Bach, Bach. Now if you take that last sound we just did, Bach, and you voice it, you get the uvular R sound, which is how the French do their R's. So try to voice that and go ha, 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 ha. Probably the best way to do this is to put this in a word. So instead of saying Paris, we're going to say Paris, Paris. You're going to put the stress on that second syllable. So this is another example. We, of course, say Paris, first syllable. In this situation, it's the second syllable that gets stressed. Paris, Paris. Try to trill that, uh, that back of that tongue to the soft palate. Pachy, pachy, pachy. Good, let's try one more word. That's the way of saying America. 
המאחיק, המאחיק, stresses on that, המאחיק, המאחיק, המאחיק. Good, now we're going to talk about French vowel sounds that don't appear in English. Okay, so you may recognize this as the vowel chart. However, these vowel sounds are slightly different for French as they would be for uh, an American pronunciation. So this, of course, is E. French do it just a little bit higher than we do it. E. This is sort of an A sound, but uh, it's not a diphthong. It's just a very short I. 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 This you recognize. That's E as in let. E. E. And this is the intermediate A. A. So it's E. 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 A. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do these three sounds again, but we're going to round our lips as we do them, and you're going to end up saying a new sound, a new French vowel sound. Okay, so you see these new phonetic symbols. These are French phonetic symbols, so they are vowel sounds for the French language. And how you do this first one is you say the E sound, and while you say the E sound, you round your lips, and that's going to create that. And that's literally, it looks like a little Y sound, but that's what that phonetic symbol is. It's a vowel sound for French. So go E, and now round your lips. E, 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 E. Now say E, and round your lips. E, 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 E. Now say E, you're going to drop your jaw a little bit more, of course, because we're going down the vowel chart. Drop the jaw and round the lips. E. E, E. Let's do this again. E, 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 E. And of course the intermediate A. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put each one of these sounds in some French words. La femme means the woman. And this is where you use that intermediate A. La femme. La femme. Rue means street, and you say rue, rue, rue. You can hear how that almost sounds like an oo sound because we're used to associating those round ellipses with the oos and who, but your tongue still makes a sound for e. La rue, la rue. De means two. And remember, you're, you're, this is sort of like an A, but you round your lips for it. D, 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 D. This means a little, and you'll notice this little nasal mark, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But uh, that's like the E with your lips rounding. You say, on, hu, on, hu. You should feel your jaw close a little bit when you do this second sound. On, hu, on, hu. This means heart, and it's pronounced que, que. So basically, your tongue goes to that uvular R, but you don't necessarily have to trill it. Que, que. Just a little uh, reminder about what nasality is. If we were to say that word in English, we might tend to nasalize the vowel sound. We might tend to say man, man. Were to transcribe that, it would be m, a, n, with a nasal above it. Man, man. Whereas, technically speaking, that's incorrect pronunciation in English. There are no vowel sounds where we nasalize them. In French, there are three vowel sounds that part of the pronunciation is you nasalize those vowel sounds. One of the signature aspects of the French language is when you have a word that ends with an N sound. This is actually the word no in French, but it's spelled N-O-N. So you don't actually pronounce this N. You don't say known. What you do is you take this last N and you put it into the vowel sound, so you nasalize the vowel sound. So instead of saying no, how we would say it, it's no, no. So you actually have some nasality right there, no. No, no. Another vowel that's nasalized is the S-E vowel. So this means end, right? La fin. 
and you don't pronounce that final N, you just put it right into that vowel sound. La fin, la fin, la fin. Another sound that's nasalized in French is the aw sound as in father. Now this word is content, and it's the same exact word and spelling in French as it is in English. We say content, content. The French would say content, content. So you first you do the whole sound with the nasality, and then the off sound is the father with the nasality. You get rid of both of those ends. Both of those ends are incorporated into the vowel sound themselves, and there's no T at the end. Content, content, content. Okay, so now we covered some French vowels that don't appear in English, and now we're going to talk about some English vowels that don't appear in the French language. And the reason why this is important is because if these vowel sounds don't appear in the French language, then a French character will tend to substitute the closest vowel sound. So that's why those substitutions appear, just like you would tend to do the same thing when you're learning a foreign language. So let's go over some of these vowel sounds that uh, appear in English but do not appear in French, and we'll talk about where these substitutions tend to happen. So right here, we have four vowel sounds that do not occur in the French language, but of course obviously occur in the English language. So there's going to be a tendency to substitute the nearest vowel sound for someone who is speaking English as their second language. So the is sound as it did does not appear in French, so there's a tendency to substitute the e as in he or, or li. The a sound as in pat doesn't appear in French, so there's a tendency to substitute this sound for the intermediate A. The U uh is in wood doesn't appear in French, so there's a tendency to substitute the U uh is in who for that vowel sound. And the A uh is in cup doesn't appear in the French language, so there's a tendency to substitute this sound for the A uh sound. So this is basically where you get your sound changes for an accent. Now let's talk about consonant sounds that occur in English but not in French. So right here, the V as in they does not occur in the French language. So there's a tendency to substitute that voiced TH sound for a voiced Z or a dentalized D. Voiced, voiced, voiced. So its counterpart as in thing does not occur in the French language. So there's a tendency to substitute it for an S or dentalized t, s, t. Voiceless, voiceless, voiceless. The, the R sound, the way we make it, like run with the tip of the tongue up towards the gum ridge, is not something they do in French. So that is obviously substituted for the uvular R, like ha, hun, hun, red, grow. They also do not have the H sound in their language, so there's a tendency not to do the H. However, everything in French is elided, so you don't replace that with a glottal attack. You still have to elide everything. And lastly, the French do not have CH or J in their language, so there's a tendency to substitute the CH sound for the SH sound instead. And they also don't have the J as in judge. So there's a tendency to substitute the je sound for it, so saying judge instead of judge. Now let's learn some French words. Now this particular word is important that everybody learn it, regardless of whether you ever do a French accent or not, because you will likely run into this word at some point in time in your acting career, and it's deceptive in terms of its pronunciation. First of all, you see an N here. You don't pronounce an N in this word. There's no N in the pronunciation, even though there's an N in the spelling. And the stress is on the second syllable. So let's just sound it out phonetically. It's monsieur, monsieur. That's that new sound we learned. Monsieur, monsieur, monsieur. So make sure you know how to pronounce that correctly. This means thank you, and it's pronounced merci, merci, merci. That means yes, and it's pronounced oui, oui, oui. 
That means good day or hello, and it's pronounced bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. That means very much, and it's pronounced beaucoup, 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 beaucoup. That means my friend, and it's pronounced mon ami, mon ami, mon ami. Now. If you were to just pronounce this word and it means my, that means my, alone, or before a word that has a consonant sound, it would be this, mon. But since that begins with a vowel sound, you link it. So now you add that N, whereas normally you wouldn't. Mon ami, mon ami. That means please, and it's pronounced s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. That means that's life, and that's pronounced c'est la vie. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. That means goodbye, and it's pronounced au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Now, this is a way of asking a question. But it's kind of the French way of saying, uh, do you agree with me, or don't you think so, or isn't that right? Um, and it's pronounced n'est-ce pas, n'est-ce pas. So they might say, um, uh, tu es mon ami, n'est-ce pas, meaning you are my friend, aren't you? So it's just sort of a way of asking questions, n'est-ce pas, n'est-ce pas. Okay, good. Now let's launch into the... Uh, French accent and the sound substitutions. So were we to carry the tendency for the French to emphasize the last syllable in a word, and were we to carry that tendency over into English, we would tend to emphasize the last syllable of all of these words um, with a French accent, even though that's not what we would do in our regular accent. So for instance, we would say never never and the first syllable would be emphasized but applying the french emphasis to it it would become never never we would say going going applying the french stress to it, it would be going going we would say spiteful spiteful for syllable stress french stress becomes spiteful spiteful so let's try these words again. Never, going, spiteful. So in our normal accents, it would be, we were just going. We were just going for syllable. Now we're going to emphasize that ing just a little bit more. We were just going. We were just going. We were just going. All right, thank you. Let's keep drilling those words.